Hi everyone, um, this is going to be a series of videos about my dog, who's right there. Um, her name is Buffy, she's a Rottweiler, she's six years old now, and um, she's terminally ill. So I wanted to do a sort of a diary about my dog, and um, here goes. So uh, three years ago, when Buffy was about three years old, she got diagnosed with elbow dysplasia. And um, elbow dysplasia, like hip dysplasia, is basically a death sentence because the disease, no matter what you do, will keep progressing. The bone will keep degenerating. Um, bone spurs will grow and eventually simple things like getting up or walking around will get so extremely painful for the dog that it's better to put the dog down um, to euthanize it. Um, as of now, um, she's in her last couple of years probably because she's she's already six years old and to have made it this far is impressive because the bone specialist said that with the progression that her uh, disease took because it was progressing so incredibly fast um, the bone specialist gave me an optimistic 16 to 18 months um, and now we're three years further along the line and there she is, as happy as can be. Um, so yes, uh, at the moment she is doing good considering um, because of the elbow dysplasia um, you would think that her character would have changed but it hasn't. She's still as happy and bouncy and cuddly and loving to anything and everyone as she used to be when before the diagnosis so her character hasn't changed all that much as in nothing she's just the same as she used to be um she has got one complication though um that she now has a granuloma on her leg a licking granuloma and um, it started off with her just licking her left front paw and for some reason when a dog gets a licking granuloma it's always the left front leg because it's easier for them to get to or something it said at some web some website I, I read it in a veterinary website and because um, I looked it up and um, I was like okay but anyway um, it started off with her just licking and the licking became obsessive behavior and I just couldn't stop her from doing it and it's it turned into these raw weeping sores almost like how the skin is all raw and it just weeps that clear fluid turned into that and then an infection got in there and um, she got these gnarly looking big bumps all over her leg and I was like, well, that's not, that's not right, you know, that's not good. And I was like, hmm, that doesn't look quite right to me, but okay. And um, I put like, um, like a tube sock over the top of it so she couldn't lick it. Like put a bandage over the top and then a tube sock so she couldn't lick it anymore. And I tried to let it heal that way. Um, but she just tore the tube sock off <laughs> and destroyed the... Um, the bandage, so I was like, oh, fat load of good that is. Um, so okay, I was like, right, okay, and then I looked at looked at it closely, and I saw that there was something coming out of this big bump, and I gently pressed on it, and all this like disgusting, nasty, horrible pus came out, and it it stank so bad. The smell was it was unbelievable. It's like the worst smell you've ever smelled. It's so rotten and decayed and oh, it was horrible. So I was like, right, okay, that's it. I don't care what anyone says, but this dog has got to get to the vets. 
So I told my husband and showed him and he's like, oh, that's gross. He goes, here's some money, please take it to the vets. So I took it to the vets and, um, cause my husband, he's, he grew up on a farm. So, you know, he doesn't, he's very down to earth when it comes to taking your animal to the vet. It has, there has to be actually something going on before you take your animal to the vet. Um, like a marked change in behavior or whatever, you know, it has to be something there before you take that animal to the vet. So I showed him to prove that I'm not overreacting, I'm not being crazy or anything, look, and I pressed it and oh, it was so horrible. My dog wasn't very pleased either, but uh, you know, you have to do what you have to do. And I was like, well, it must feel better for you to have all that horrible nastiness out rather than have it in your leg. But I didn't press too much out because I was like, well, I want the vet to see it as well. So I went, took her to the vet and I showed the vet and the vet was like, well, I can't touch it because <laughs> she's growling at me. And I was like, well, I can do it. So. A vet tech held her head and I just like pushed down on from starting from the top of the lump and I just pushed down and all this horrible white green black red nasty stinking pus came out and the vet was like oh that stinks and we quickly cleaned it off and he grabbed some and he put it under his microscope and stuff and he looked at it and he goes like, yeah, it's just an infection. It's nothing really too serious. And I was like, well, why does she keep licking her, le her leg? And he's like, oh, that's an obsessive compulsive disorder called a licking granuloma. There's not much that you can do about it. Um, he said, the only thing that we can do is treat the symptoms. And as far as the behavior, once it started, he said it's almost impossible to get the dog out of it he said it's so incredibly difficult he said you know so don't hold your breath that you'll be able to get your dog out of this behavior so i was like okay well at least then i'm not i know you know shit happens you know and um he gave me some antibiotics and he gave her some uh anti-inflammatory uh injections and stuff like that and um, sent us on our merry way with um, a message that if um, she didn't, if the antibiotic course didn't clear up the whole infection in, in the one course, then we'd have to come back. So I finished the course and about a week later, um, the lump came back. So obviously it didn't kill the entire infection because otherwise the lump wouldn't have come back. So I said to my husband, look, I need to go back because that's what the vet told me, la, 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 la. And he's like, okay. And I said, don't worry, I've got money in my bank so I can pay for it myself. So me and my sister went to the vets and this time he gave her a steroid injection, um, anti-inflammatory and antibiotic injections. And then um, he also gave uh, me another course of antibiotics to give to the dog and a course of prednisone which I'm not very happy about but you know shit happens um, and I have to start with the prednisone on the 29th of this month September um, so we're just gonna have to wait and see how uh, she gets on with that I'm hoping that it won't affect her behavior too much because my mother's Sharpay, who has an autoimmune disease, um, used to be on prednisone and it made him into a limp little noodle that didn't want to do anything. Um, he was a very depressed little dog because of the prednisone, so whereas he used to be this really lively, happy, playful dog. and. Um, after he got weaned off the prednisone, um, he returned to being that happy normal dog. So prednisone can seriously affect a dog's mental state and their behavior and everything else. So I'm hoping it won't affect her too much. Um, 
I won't be grieving if it will take her down just a notch um, because she is very in your face, you know. Um, so if it just takes her down a little bit, I won't. That won't. I won't mind too much. But if it turns her into a limp little noodle that doesn't want to do anything anymore, then yeah, I won't be happy. But I only have to give her a prednisone once every other day, and only one tablet. So we'll just wait and see because the vet said that this is a form of a licking granuloma that he hasn't seen before um, it doesn't behave like normal licking granulomas so we're hoping that the prednisone in combination with the antibiotics will actually clear it up completely um, so we'll just have to wait and see how it goes as of now the antibiotics are kicking in they are doing their job. Um, she gets one, three, yeah, three tablets a day. Um, she's doing well. Um, she doesn't appear to be in any pain. She's still happy and wagging her tail and being her jealous self and annoying the cats and um, begging for attention and walks and everything else. And she still behaves like her usual self. So. Um, so far all is well um, I'm gonna be doing more of these just um, it's mainly for myself but also for other people who are going through this through a similar thing with their dogs um, there are a lot of dogs out there who have obsessive behaviors um, like licking granulomas or dogs with either elbow dysplasia, hip dysplasia, arthrosis, things like that because she has elbow dysplasia and arthrosis in her shoulder as well so yeah it's uh, it's basically to show everyone that despite what the vet says Buffy, Buffy your dog can still look and feel as happy as she does and um, yeah I'm hoping that she'll stay as happy and go lucky and loving to cuddle as she always does no that is not for little doggy noses I've got some nacho <laughs> nachos on my desk and she wants them but she's not allowed Where are you? so yes there you go um, I'm going to be doing regular updates on her, how she's feeling, um, maybe if she's done something crazy then uh, I'll let you guys know. I mean she's always getting up to mischief, uh, she's a very mischievous dog. Um, so yeah, I'll just keep you guys updated and if you have any questions about any of the diseases that I've mentioned, the licking granuloma, um, the arthrosis or the dysplasia then just leave me a comment and I'll answer it in another video to get more in depth about it and um, I'll help you along as good as you can as good as I can <laughs> and um, yeah say bye bye say bye bye are you gonna say bye bye there's the camera there. Say bye bye. No, those are the nachos. You're not allowed to say bye bye to those. So, yes. Hopefully, everything will keep going as it goes. And she will stay this happy, loving, cuddly dog that she is. See you guys later. Bye.